Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag to another edition of Over the Bench. So this time we're going to look at a Husqvarna 257 chainsaw. The customer complaint was that he couldn't get it started. Well as you'll see here in a minute, there's a very good reason why he couldn't get it started. But this guy, um, he really didn't want to spend any money on repairing this saw. I kind of convinced him that if we could do it for cheap, you know, we'd go ahead and do it if we didn't find anything major wrong with it. And, you know, you might think, well, you, there, there's our fuel line off. No big deal. As long as uh, there's nothing wrong with that carburetor, we're going to be okay here. So you might think that uh, I passed up on an opportunity to sell a new chainsaw. And I probably did. Um... I don't know how much money people think we make on them chainsaws, but we make more money fixing them than we do selling them. Now, if you're selling a, a piece of equipment to a first-time customer and you're earning a customer, yes, you might, in the long run, earn more money in sales over the years. But when uh, I have to call a customer and tell them that his piece of equipment is junk, and uh, he needs to replace it. I sometimes get accused of just trying to sell new equipment. <laughs> and that's not the case. Because, like I said, with where our shop rate is, you know, we can make more money repairing them than we can replacing them. So we found a fuel line that's cracked and it's not pushed onto the carburetor. We're going to remove that fuel line. We dumped the fuel out and it didn't it didn't appear to be like swamp piss. So hopes are still high that the carburetor is in good shape. Now we're going to use this officially Husky branded fuel line here. It's curly pigtail fuel line uh, the only trick on this repair is that you know this top half that's metal right below the carburetor the line has to pass through that and then there's a gap and then it's got to pass through the top of the plastic tank because that line has got a curl to it you can't really just push it in from the top and expect it to go straight down and and catch the hole below it in the tank. So what I did was I put a flashlight in the tank so I could see the hole, get as close to it as I can, and then we'll take the uh, the pliers there and, and feed the line through the tank. I'm a little salty on this video, I tell you what. This uh, insert here in the video where I'm talking, this is my third attempt. The first two didn't have audio. And <laughs> what I wanted to say was, if you don't see this video, then you'll know the, this one didn't have audio either. But if I don't make the video, you won't know that I was having problems. So I don't give a crap if there's no audio and just see me with my lips flapping. I'm posting this one. And uh, speaking of being salty and grumpy, what is taking this dude so long to put this filter on here? I timed this earlier. 40 seconds. Cripes, we're cutting into my profit margin here. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. 40 seconds. You can see my frustration there in the video. And we put the cheapest fuel filter on that I could find. So, I mean, a guy just didn't want to spend any money. So, the next thing I have to do is fish this fuel line underneath the throttle linkage. Get it over to this side of the carburetor and push it on that white barbed fitting simple stuff we're just going to flush cut the end of the fuel line here because right now it's cut at a taper and 
and we'll push it onto the barb fitting. You can't see me doing that right now because my big fat hand is in the way, but I don't think you need a, a visual on that. Just take my word for it. We're pushing the fuel line onto the barb fitting. Let's go! So check out this throttle linkage. It's moving what? A quarter to a half of the total throw? That dude never said nothing about having a problem with the throttle linkage, but it was an old man and who knows when the last time he used the saw was. I don't know. Maybe he's not even familiar with the saw and it's someone else's saw and he just brought it in, but... Um, at first I was a little confused what the heck was going on here. And then I realized that uh, it was the trigger itself. If you look real close, you'll see that there's no pin holding that trigger into the fuel tank handle. The pin's completely gone. Well, I didn't have... A <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't have the original pin... You know, I can't remember. Maybe I did have one out of a donor saw, but it just slid right through. That's what it was. The pin just slid right through and it wouldn't stay in place. So I'm kind of simulating there what I'm going to do in the vise. Is I just knurled the uh, center of that pin. So, uh, you know, I just kept hitting it with the chisel to uh, raise some edges and fatten it up. And then we're just going to tap it into place so that it locks into the gray trigger and pivots on the orange handle. You know, it's just one of those do what you got to do, get it done repairs. And, you know, there's 20 different punches in the toolbox just, just right there a couple feet away. But I insist on using the one I got in my hand. So anyway, we got the trigger repaired. We're going to put a new spark plug in it and fire this thing up and hope that it runs. How is that? Because if it doesn't, I'm pretty sure I just wasted a bunch of time. What? I mean, like the guy just it's didn't want to spend any money. If I had to go back and say, well, i got to rebuild the carburetor, you know, he, he would have probably said no. And he may have bought a new saw, but I still would have lost this time. And actually, this is pretty much real time. Except for, you know, answering a phone or being interrupted. You know, we're just over eight minutes into this repair, and I honestly don't think I got any more time than that into it. So let's see if it starts. So at first I was kind of nervous there. It was running pretty fast at idle. Chain was spinning pretty fast. Went idle down. I thought I had an air leak. But I think it was just um, after I fixed the trigger, the physical length of the throttle linkage was enough to hold the throttle open just a little bit and the uh, the arm wasn't resting on the adjustment screw. And when you think about it, I only backed out a couple turns. That's only a very short length of the rod being too long, so um, it wasn't bogging when I was hitting the trigger. I don't think we had an air leak at all. So now, in this part of the video, we're wrapping it up, but you're going to get to see a tool that you know, some people wonder why having a toolbox. And it's a long cabinet screwdriver. 
Um, you wouldn't really associate that too much with chainsaw repair. But, you know, you try and use a scrunch on this tensioner screw that's tucked between the, the bar and the felling dogs. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. But using one of these long screwdrivers here, I mean, this is a, a walk in the park right now. So that's why I keep that screwdriver in the box. So anyway, that's all I got for you on the Husqvarna 257 fuel line slash trigger repair. Thanks for watching. Later.